Entrepreneurs are advised to become business innovators. Ministry of Agriculture hosts seminar for U.S. import regulation for fresh fruits and vegetables. And the Chief Education Officer endorses music in schools. Hello and welcome to this edition of National Focus. I'm Kimani Saint-Jean. And I'm Priska Julian. Stay with us for details of these and other stories after this. When you think about it, food is life. That's why people come to Dominica. They don't only come for the waterfall or the scenery or the view, but it's the flavor. Sometimes it is just what they can taste. The flavors that we have here, you can't find anywhere in the world. They are truly unique. I've been in business 17 years and I see so many guests come and go. My business is to put a smile on their face and something good in their belly. Everything we serve here is local. It comes from all over Dominica. So we get fresh lettuce or vegetable or fish from Santover, all our product from the farm. Sometimes go on the farm and have them pick the uniqueness of the experience is in how authentic it is. I heard the um, taxi driver promoting my plantain chips. I said, that's the best plantain chips you can ever have. I don't have to go and put it on TV. <laughs> Money is not everything, but leaving customer with a smile, friendly service, and they will come back. This is the real Dominica. I'm just proud to be a part of it. My name is Maurice Smith. They call me Rudy. Tourism is my business. Thanks for staying with us. The Honorable Parliamentary Representative for the St. Joseph constituency, Kelvadaru, is encouraging entrepreneurs in his constituency to become pioneers with their business endeavors. The Honorable MP was addressing the closing ceremony of a small business training in St. Joseph last Thursday. He urged participants to expand the services being offered in the district as a way of developing the communities and creating sustainable income. I'm also hoping, my dear friends, that those of us who have attended this training and even those who will be viewing this via the media, various media houses, would also be able to recognize some of the businesses that are not available in St. Joseph and see how you can work together as an individual or as a group, collectively, to start up a fresh business. Something that you cannot get in St. Joe. Something that is not being offered in St. Joe. So you have to brainstorm. Participants of the training have been receiving financial aid from government through the Ministry of Commerce, Enterprise and Small Business Development to assist the entrepreneurs to establish viable businesses. Honorable Daru hopes the participants will utilize the financial aid in a prudent manner. What I would like to see coming out from this training session is that all of you who will be benefiting, you will be able to utilize the funds in such a way that your businesses will improve, your work ethic and customer relationship will also improve, and you will see more profits at the end of the day for your business. The 39 participants of the two-day small business training received information and simulation practices in various components of running a small business. One of the participants, Troy James, says he is now more equipped to run his small business. Before these two days of session, I was rather confused and lagging behind how to manage my business. But over the past two days, I have listened with keen ears to Mr. Joseph, and I must say that I have learned quite a lot on how to manage my business. I've learned business strategies, record keeping, steps of setting up my business, and now I know my strengths and weaknesses of how to manage my business. Because for the past years, I have been trying hard on how to invest my money to further enhance my business. But after listening to Mr. Joseph, I think I am more further equipped to move forward. Me personally would like to thank Mr. Joseph and I can assure him that what he has instilled in me over the past two days will go a long way in helping me in my business. Believe you me, I am taking my business to the next level. This small business training in St. Joseph was the 12th of a series being conducted by the Ministry of Commerce, Enterprise and Small Business Development. 
The Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries, in collaboration with the United States Division of Agriculture, hosted a seminar last Friday on the U.S. import regulations for fresh fruits and vegetables. In his welcome remarks, Director of Trade, Mathan Walter, stated that the U.S. supports efforts by the government of Dominica to provide a higher standard of living for its citizens. Today, we move forward in our cooperative efforts and to embrace technical assistance and capacity building with the United States as it relates, as it relates to meeting the prerequisite import regulations necessary to comfortably enter this lucrative market. I think I speak for all relevant stakeholders here today when I say to the Trade Director that we are most appreciative of this much needed and timely intervention. Walter provided details of Dominica's export trade to the United States over the past five years. In 2013, export trade with the United States reached $506,823.12 EC. We exported approximately EC $424,967.23 worth of dashin, for example. We continue to export sweet potatoes, sweet peppers, tea bags, nutmeg, other cinnamon, ginger, and pawpaw, to name a few, to the United States. It's clear, therefore, that farmers, and by that I mean our hardworking farmers in Dominica, benefit from this, from exportation to this market. In 2012, the U.S. imported over 9 million tons of fresh produce, including bananas, pineapples, avocado, and mangoes. These imports doubled in 2016. The Director of Trade urged stakeholders to take advantage of the opportunities which these statistics present. We feel that when we are asked to make efforts to meet regional and international standards, that the government entities requesting this from us are putting unnecessary pressures on us, it's on, on the farmers and the hoxers, or, or trying to create hardships in your business. That is the way that, that these things are being interpreted on the ground. I want to tell you today that we live in a new dispensation, that time is changing. And if standards, and by that I mean quality standards, are not met, and regulations put in place by our trading partners are not adhered to, these opportunities which I just spoke to will be but a distant and non-accessible opportunity. Head of Dominica's Plant Protection and Quarantine Unit, Ryan Anselm, stated that the USDA, in collaboration with its partners, have considered the Caribbean the third border and put in place programs, provided funding as well as technical assistance to prevent entry of invasive species to the U.S. Understanding the need for safeguarding the region's plant health resources, we have established in collaboration with the University of the West Indies, a regional plant quarantine course which has seek to train 200 quarantine officers of the Caribbean. The program also has trained 200 laboratory technicians in pest identification and diagnostic and this training is an annual training held in Grenada. So the forum has been doing excellent work and we will continue to do excellent work. Through the initiative of CAFSA and the USDA, FAO and ICA, the region have set to train plant health officials in pest risk analysis. And this is very important when we speak about trade facilitation. Through the OECS, three pest risk analysis units will be established in Grenada, St. Vincent, and Dominica. Barbara Sprangler of the United States Department of Agriculture is in Dominica facilitating the seminar. I was asked to explain how we put our rules in place and what an exporter would need to do to get entry into our market. So I will be explaining the tools that we have 
to help them. We have a lot of uh, on-site, online website tools that are free and easily available if they have connection to the internet. And I will be explaining some of the tools that we hope producers and the industry can use here to mitigate pests before they come to us. And, and what happens if we do find a pest in a shipment and, and how we handle that. Spangler noted Dominica's progress in terms of compliance with the rules and regulations. Dominica has been doing very well. We get what we call non-compliance reports, which I will speak to today as well. And that tells us when we find something when it arrives on our coast, that's not correct. It could be the paperwork, but it could be a pest that we have to take action on. Uh, the Caribbean has come a long way in finding out and, and stopping those things from happening. Some countries have more to do than others. However, the people I work with in trade, the more trade problems you have, it's not bad because that means probably the more trade you're doing. We'd like to eliminate those problems when it comes to plant health, but uh, trade problems mean more trade, so you know, it's kind of a trade-off. Participants of a recently completed culinary arts program initiated by the Adult Education Division have launched a cookbook called La Pouette Qui Do on Friday. The Adult Education Division, in collaboration with the Point Michel Village Council, hosted the launch and exhibition of dishes from the cookbook. Adult Education Officer Francesca Joseph gave a synopsis of the book's content and a review of recipes. Everything in it is from the group itself, is recipes they have tried and succeeded. So on the front covers, you will see Welcome to Hollywood Cooking and Bon Appetit. And when you taste the cooking, it has no, its salt content is low and the oil content is also low. So I advise you, your, for your health benefits, it's okay to taste and to eat. This is just a draft, it's in draft form, and it will be fully ready for you all in August this year. The Honorable Parliamentary Representative for the Sufra constituency, Dennis Charles, congratulated the group and presented additional opportunities available to them. You who have received this culinary training also have the opportunity to access assistance to further enhance or start your own business. And that is why my constituents, I am proud to be a part of a government which is people-focused and invest significantly in your personal growth. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Social Services, Helen Roy, says the possibilities are endless for the participants. We are positive that it will expand the economic possibilities of the participants, create avenues for employment, assist participants to utilize their new acquired skills, to develop themselves and their communities. I hope also that the Adult Education Department will give you some, some business. The three-month culinary arts program ended in May. One participant, Valina Toussaint, says she learned a lot from the program. Some of the key tools learned were food presentation, plating, garnishing, taste and preparation of food in quick time. The recipes of fruit sauces were amazing, namely passion fruit, tambourine, and guava. Can't leave out the preparation of vegetables, pudding, a variety of soups, and, do and those salad dressings. Learning went on further to cocktails, pastries, smoke herring acres. Just imagine smoke herring acres, <laughs> liver cocktail, cake making. I couldn't ice, but right now I can ice. Icing and fondant, pin roll and canopy sandwiches, this list can go on and on. The course was a holistic one. It was not only about cooking. We also had sessions with Mr. Robinson, environment and health officer, who touched on food safety, health and hygiene, temperature control and source of contamination. You're watching National Focus more when we return. I believe in the natural order of things. I believe in the, in the harmony of things, you know, in everything we do. We have to keep it natural. I've been doing farming for now over a decade. My day is very hectic, but I make it light, you know, because I enjoy what I do. 
I enjoy producing the best quality goods and to make sure that the people that receive it, they receive the best that they can ever get. Right from the farm, everything that I grow, I process them back into the farm so that the same things that grow in the farm is what protects the farm. Tourism is my business. You know, it's not just dealing with the foreigners that come in, but it's preparing those things that when they come, they can feel and taste the difference in coming to this exotic island. And it starts with the farmer because we provide the things that they eat, that they taste, that they drink. I believe in my heart that it's my responsibility to provide quality. My name is Tony Alves and tourism is my business. The Honorable Minister for Health, Dr. Kenneth Daru, has encouraged organizers of last weekend's yoga event to host regular yoga activities for the Dominican public. Over 20 nationals participated in yoga stretching exercises on Saturday morning on the grounds of the Dominican State College in observance of International Yoga Day. I'm hoping that it wouldn't just be a one-time event for International Yoga Day, but probably you can have a full-time program and maybe then I might be able to join. Uh, over the years, um, especially in recent times, um, alternative medicine like yoga and other um, traditional um, medicines have been very prominent. In fact, um, with the rising cost of Western medicine, over the years we've seen more and more people looking, looking and turning towards um, what they call the alternative medicine for, of course, relief, especially when everything else would have failed. And while I think that um, the jury is still out on the actual results and curative results of things like yoga, no one can deny the importance of exercise, which is what a lot of what yoga um, entails, and of course combining the wellness of the body and mind. The theme for 2017 initiated by the Permanent Mission of India to the United Nations is Yoga for Health. The theme highlights the fact that yoga can contribute in a holistic way to achieving an equilibrium between mind and body. Since its inception in 2015, International Yoga Day has been celebrated annually on June 21st, as it is the longest day of the year. Chief Education Officer in the Ministry of Education, Melina Fontaine, is promoting music in schools for the holistic development of children. Fontaine was addressing the official start of the primary school's music festival at the Ara House of Culture last Friday. Today, there is convincing evidence that music is worthy of recognition as a valuable subject in the school's curriculum, both as a standalone subject as well as a tool for teaching in all subject areas. As a standalone subject, it compares favorably with the respective fields of mathematics and science and involves thinking in terms of precision, exactness, and quantitative as well as qualitative analysis and a high level of abstract thinking. Fontaine affirmed that the Ministry of Education will continue to promote the development of music through curriculum offerings and integration within subject areas. She revealed that teachers are now being trained and certified through the Associate Board of the Royal School of Music. This is in an effort to not only teach the practical, but also the theory, so that our students will be able to read as well as write their own music. In three of our secondary schools, students are studying and writing music examinations at CSEC level. Within the last two years, Mr. Alexander has also been able to publish two booklets and one manual for use in our schools. And also, under the recently completed Education Enhancement Project, two of our teachers were able to pursue Bachelor in Music Education. Here are a few highlights of the students' performances on Friday.
And that's the English segment of the news. Shakira Pia is up next with Creole Highlights. Bienvenue à ce nouvel accueil, non moi c'est Shakira Pia. Mam Palema pour Saint Joseph, Honorable Kelva Daru, ka encourage moun ki ni business a constituency pour engager a business ki pa ka existe a Saint Joseph. Honorable Daru te ka adwese yo ceremony pour femme training piti business a Saint Joseph jeudi semaine passé. Honorable Daru di se participants la pour fè business ki ke mene development economic a Saint Joseph. Gouvernement ka wè de moun epi laja pou koumanse business yo, epi sa se yon manye pou fè business pli meye. Honorable Daru an kouaje se participants la pou se vilaja la gouvernement ka ba yo an yon bon manye. A dat nouvel, Mini Sante, Honorable Dr. Kenneth Daru di sektor Sante a Dominika avanse. Honorable Daru fè pa wol ki septam yon douze jen moun ka ale pou etudye pou fè dokte. Mini Sante la di relasyon epi Cuba ka wede Dominik yon lo an Sante. Honorable Daru wi mesye Cuba pou asistans la yo ka ba Dominik an sektor Sante. Septam nou ni an kwe douzen pli jen moun ka vi estor di sis Dr. Nef. Avec nous, nous avons parlé de nous pour ce qui est aussi qui a spécialisé au Cuba. Sur tout ce qui est là, nous avons l'hôpital Nef là, fini, avec tout ce qui est moderne, nous avons des nouveaux spécialistes, avec tout ce qui est là, nous avons un health system qui a développé. Oui, nous avons des problèmes, nous avons des détails, des espoirs administratifs, des choses pour dire, mais nous avons des commodités en anglais qui sont. C'est un bon temps pour 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 ces ministres ministres santé. Mam Palema pour Guantanamo, Honorable Ian Douglas, pour secteur petit business, qui a manié pour développer Dominique, mais aussi qui a développé Guantanamo. Honorable Douglas, c'est qu'à parler pas de votre cérémonie au Lyon, sans qu'à votre monde tape le certificat pour un déjeu training au fait et puis ministre petit business. Mam Pale Maladi, Guantan Skatape Opportunity pour développer pis l'hôtel Nef ka bati en place la. Ide pis tout se bagay sa la ka fete a Guantan Spiti Business ke fe bon. Epi finalman, Minis Agriculte kolabowe epi divizyo Agriculte Lamewik pou chenyo semina asu regulasyon pou podwi epi lejim fwe pou moun ki engaje en Agriculte. Director Trade, Marfan Walter, di la mewi ka sipote efo gouvelman ka fe pou leve kouman moun ka viva Dominik. Dominik ka voye pou dwi kon da chin pata dou pima epi miska dan la mewi pou sek lani ki panse. An lani 2012, plis ki 9 mil dola pou dwi fwe te vand an la mewi. Walter an kouaje moun ki engajen agrikulte pou sevi opportunite sa la pou fe pou dwi li o bon pou yo tape makit pou van li. Sa se tout pou nouvel akwe yo, nan wè se Shaki Repe. Au vwa. Coming up next, your tip of the day. Here are a few things you can do if a flood warning is affected for your country or area. Identify the safest road to your nearest relief center. Live well before roads are closed by water. Get ready to move vehicles, outdoor equipment, garage, chemicals, and poisons to higher locations. Work out which indoor items you want to put in a higher spot. Think about what you will do with the contents of your fridge and freezer. And check your emergency kit and make plans to keep your pets safe. Also let friends, family, and neighbors know what your plans are. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website, news.gov.dm. Like our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash GIS News Dominica and follow our Twitter at GIS Dominica. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. From all of us here on the GIS News Production Team, I am Priska Julian. And I'm Kimani Serja. Thank you for watching.